Hey there, it's Ben Hassel here, and here in this tutorial we're going to be having a look at how we mix two audio tracks together. So we're going to be mixing the voice track from our video uh, with a music track, and looking at how we dip down the music track when our voice comes in. So without further ado, let's dive into it and have a look at how we mix two audio tracks together in Final Cut Pro 10. So here in Final Cut Pro we're going to have a look at the fundamentals of doing a simple audio edit. So we have a voice track here. Um, from the video um, and we also have a music track that you can see down here on our timeline. Now the first thing we want to do when we actually come to edit this audio um, is to turn off the music for the moment. So I'm going to select my audio track and tap the V key and that allows me just to listen to the voice track, make sure I've got the levels for that track right um, before I go ahead and then edit uh, the levels for the audio track so that it mixes um, with the voice. So the first thing we're going to do as well is make sure that we're all looking at the same screen layout. So if you go to Window, Workspaces, and just check the default layout, then we know that we're all going to be looking um, at the same layout um, here in Final Cut Pro 10. Um, and we're also going to show the audio meters here. So if I click on those audio meters, we can show those and then stretch them out on the right hand side. And this is just a great way of seeing where our audio levels are falling rather than just uh, relying on our ears to figure out whether the audio is at the right level. So the track, or the audio track specifically that I have on the video here, has two channels to it. Now to bring up uh, the audio properties, um, we need to go up to the inspector at the top right. And if you still don't see it, then you can click this little button up at the top right to show the inspector. And we can see that this audio track has two uh, channels to it. And I'm recording uh, the audio here um, on a lav mic into channel one, um, and then the built-in microphone, which we don't want, um, is recording into dialogue two here. So actually, we're gonna turn this channel off completely. Um, and before I've done this, I've actually changed this from stereo, um, where we can't separate out those two tracks, to dual mono, um, where we can then see the different parts of that audio track. And you can see there's a lot more noise um, in the background of this Dialog 2 track. So I'm going to uncheck that. And then I'm going to click on Dialog 1. Um, and we're going to do a couple of things here. This is just my preference for kind of managing the audio options here. Um, in the inspector, we have a few options for actually modifying the audio. And I'll just expand this so we can really see this a bit more clearly. Uh, I'm going to select Dialog 1 here. And um, if you don't see things like the loudness, the noise removal, and the hum removal, um, then you may need to click on this show or hide button for the audio analysis. And that allows us to select different methods of analyzing and improving the audio. And I find in Final Cut Pro that as a, a quick method of bringing the audio levels up to a level that I'm happy with, the loudness works pretty well. Um, although I sometimes do need to boost it um, a little bit. And then for noise removal, I find that at 50% I start to get that robot-y like sound that you get sometimes when you do too much noise removal. So normally I'm adding a little bit of noise removal but then dialing it back to somewhere around 20% noise removal and that does a pretty good job for me. You can see there's a few little peaks in here but actually we can get rid of those um, just by dipping the audio levels in a minute. Uh, and we can do a test, that's always important. So uncheck your noise level, listen back to it um, on the speakers and also on headphones to see if you've got any noise there. And also remember that if there's a little bit of noise, we're adding an audio track to the background of this, which will help to mask um, some of that background noise that you get from things like lights and fridges um, and other electronic devices. So we'll check noise removal, uh, keep it at 20%. And then if I play this back, and I'm playing it back muted, so we're not going to hear any sound, we're just going to see it um, in the audio levels. We don't really actually need to listen to it for this purpose, we can see that things are dipping below minus 12 a little bit. So I want to get most of the audio hovering just up to minus 6, maybe a little above, but then also below minus 12 um, on occasion. So if we play this through again, I'm just going to increase the levels, maybe by 3 or 4 decibels, until I get that audio hovering around that minus 12 mark. And we want to try and keep all of our audio levels at that particular point and actually sometimes I'll even boost them a little bit more um, just so that I can make sure that people can hear them and you can type in a value here as well. So those are the main things I'm doing to my voice track and um, when I'm actually adding it into Final Cut Pro and we can also modify the overall audio level by dragging 
the line up and down on the timeline, what you might find sometimes is that it drags quite quickly. So we end up going from minus 12 to plus 12 quite quickly without any fine tuning there. If you hold down the command key and drag your audio level, then it will slow down the drag that it's doing. So you can see when I'm holding down command and dragging, it's letting me actually drag that a little more slowly, which is super useful when you're actually managing those audio levels. So if we now turn on our music track, we'll now find that if we play this through, it's great at the start, but then once the voice kicks in as well, we start to get some peaking and we'll also start to get some interference between the voice and the music track as well. And this is where we need to start managing the levels of that audio. Now, there's a couple of different ways that I add my keyframes to my music track to dip it. Uh, and actually, before we dip the music track, I'm actually just going to dip the beginning of this uh, video track. I can see there's a little bit of noise um, in there right at the start of the track. So I'm going to select my range selection tool here and then just drag along to the left and we can then grab that line and drag it all the way down. We don't need to hold down command, we just wanna drag it to minus infinity, which is where your audio will be completely silent. Um, and then if we jump back to the selection tool, we can click away and you can see I've silenced that audio at the beginning until we jump in and are listening to the audio track. So if we scroll down here a little bit, we can see the, the music track. And at this point, we may want to zoom into the timeline a little bit. Now you can use different shortcuts for doing that. Uh, my playhead is located here. If I do Command and Plus, it's going to zoom me in to that particular point in time. We can see the two keyframes that have been added here. And then if we come across to the zoom options here, you can see we've got the options to zoom in and out of our timeline. And it will remain centered on that uh, playhead. It won't let that slide um, out of view. So we're always gonna have that uh, playhead in view when we zoom in and zoom out. Um, and then we can also adjust the clip height as well. And as I mentioned, Command Plus is the shortcut for zooming in. Um, Shift, Command and Plus will change the clip height so we can actually see a bit more of that audio waveform by holding down Shift and Command and then tapping the plus key. Or if we wanna quickly see all our tracks, we can do Shift, Command and Minus and that will allow us to zoom right out until our tracks become much shorter. And if we're working with layered clips like we are a little further down the timeline, that can help us out when we're editing in different ways. So here we want to see more of the audio waveform. So Shift, Command and Plus will zoom me in and let me see when those beats are happening. So I want to fade this down before the voice kicks in here. And there's a couple of different ways of doing this. So I'm going to line this up so I can see all of the first part of this voice track. So I want to keep the sound level up at zero at the beginning. And then I'm going to mark an in point around here. Um, so we can use the range selection tool to select a range by dragging it out. And then we can adjust that too. Um, and another favorite shortcut of mine is Shift, Command, and A, which will deselect everything. Um, but if we keep the selection tool selected, we can just press I on the keyboard. That will mark an in point. And then we can scroll ahead to this point in time where we want to have the audio come back up. And you can see I've kind of got that beat timed with uh, the audio jumping back up. And I can mark an out point. And now with that range selected, I'll we'll scroll so we can see it all here. Um, if we pop on the timeline and just drag that down, you can see we're adding keyframes at either end of that. So I've used a few shortcuts there, Command plus and minus to zoom in and out, Shift, Command and plus or minus to increase the height of the timeline, and then I and O to mark um, areas of my timeline. And when we're moving along the timeline like this, we need to make sure we have scrubbing turned on so that we can uh, kind of see where we're marking that in and out point. So now if we want to adjust uh, the levels in here, we can just keep modifying that level in the middle. If we hold down command, we can fine tune it so we can really move it by one decibel at a time. We can also modify it up in the inspector as well. So if we come to the inspector, 
we can see now that we've got keyframes that we can move between. So I can use the backwards arrows and forwards arrows to move to my keyframes where I can type in specific levels. Okay, and I'm typing in a level on that specific keyframe. So I've got one keyframe here at zero, minus 25, minus 23 is my first keyframe. Let's make them both the same, minus 25. Um, and then I can also move my keyframes around. So I'm on my selection tool here. If I find the dip is too harsh or a little bit too abrupt coming up, I can modify this so that I get those keyframes and that kind of lift of the music in exactly the right spot so that we hear the beat or so that we're quiet enough when the voice kicks in at the beginning. So you can see now when I play through, we've dropped that audio down. We're not getting any of those uh, peaks where the red buttons are turning on. We're just getting the voice and we can modify this up so that we can hear a bit more audio or a little less. And really when you're doing that, um, that's where you want to keep your volume exactly the same so that when you're listening back to it, you're not adjusting your volume to listen to things more clearly. You should be adjusting your levels on the timeline to do that. So don't change the volume um, on your Mac when you're actually editing audio. So don't increase or decrease the volume. Make sure that you um, keep the volume at the same level. I'm just muting it so we don't get the background noise here, but I normally keep mine um, at around four if I'm listening to the built-in speakers um, or if I'm listening to it on headphones, um, then I'm listening to it through a sound card. Um, so I'll just keep that at the same level so there's a couple of other ways of adding keyframes here as well. So we're going to drop down the audio before we start speaking again here. This is another voice track um, that we've got um, here. So I could mark it in an out point, um, but I can't see necessarily exactly where I want it to end. Um, so I'm going to actually hold down the Alt key and or Option key on the keyboard. And I've got the selection tool selected here, holding down Alt or Option. Um, it's going to add keyframes for me and I can drop that down and again I can hold down command if I want to be a bit more refined about uh, how I'm adjusting it and you need to do that on the line rather than on the, the keyframe I can drop that down say to minus 19 so I still got a nice amount of audio there and then I come to the end here of the sentence hold down the alt or option key click a couple of times to add those keyframes so this one is holding that level throughout that period of time and then I can lift it up here um, to zero again so I get that music kicking back in and then we can scroll down the timeline and just hold down the alt or option key and dip or raise that audio click away and retime the, the dips and the raises so that we get that music in just the right spot as it's lifting up or dipping down. Uh, we can also see some little bits of noise here and if we're hearing them um, then we can also hold down the Alt key and drop down the audio levels at those particular points in time so that we don't get any uh, unwanted noise at the beginning or end of our clips. And if you hear any clicks or pops in your audio, then you can also use these fade buttons. You don't necessarily need to add keyframes at the beginning and end. You can just do a little fade in or out um, at the beginning or end of your clip just so that it avoids any clicks or pops um, as you're moving through. Sometimes with a shorter gap here, um, I won't necessarily raise the audio back up to zero. It can be a little abrupt um, if it's going too loud for too short a space of time. So I'll just lift it up a few decibels so we get a little bit of a, a raise in the audio levels there and then just make sure I'm fading it and it's sounding good as I'm playing it back. So if we do Shift and Z, we can see our whole timeline. Now you can see we've kind of modified our audio levels so they're lifting up and dropping down different amounts between those keyframes. If we have keyframes, for instance, if we add a keyframe here and we've made a horrible mistake, we didn't mean to do this, then we can right click on that keyframe and delete it and delete these ones too. And then just to recap, because we only covered it once, we can also use the range selection tool anywhere on our timeline. Sometimes snapping gets in the way a little bit when you're actually trying to use the range selection tool. So you can see it's snapping to the edit points on my main timeline. 
here. So when I'm moving the mouse, it's not moving one frame at a time. So if I turn snapping off across here on the right, you'll find you get a bit more of a fluid motion when you select different areas of the audio to lift them up or raise them down. So obviously the key thing to do once you've finished editing um, is to play it through and make sure you don't get any peaking in your video and that the audio levels sound good and also sound even throughout the entire track that you've edited. And before we finish up this tutorial, I just wanted to mention one last way of raising up and dipping down the audio levels. So if we come back and select the range selection tool up here, we'll just raise up this uh, short section of audio uh, between the voices here. And if we turn snapping off again, make sure it's off, we'll drag along. And what I'm gonna do here, instead of using the mouse to drag it up or lower it down, I'm gonna hold down control and then hit the plus key on the keyboard. And you can see in there, and we'll just zoom in a little bit on the timeline there. You can see that when I'm doing control and plus, it's actually raising up the audio levels between those uh, selections, between the area I selected with the range selection tool. So you can use control plus to raise up your audio levels and control minus to lower them down. And that's the last tip for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Um, and if you have any questions, then leave them in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.